Tim, the CEO report. Hey, good morning, everybody. So today I, I, uh, I have a bit of an essay that I want to share with the, with the board and the community. Uh, following last week's conviction in the George Floyd case and the ongoing racial injustices in the Black, Asian, and Hispanic communities, I wanted to reflect on injustice and inclusiveness and how that applies to us here in Rossmore. This past year, as everybody knows, has been especially challenging in so many ways on a personal and societal level. Our lives have been upended by a devastating pandemic. Friends and family members have contracted the disease. So many rights and privileges that many of us have taken for granted all our lives have been suspended. We've been told to mask, social distance, sanitize, limit our contact with others. We've been for, forbidden from visiting loved ones in care facilities and hospitals. We've not been able to congregate, recreate, worship, or eat without significant limitations. Businesses have closed and some permanently. Layered on top of the pandemic has been a national election, political upheaval, and a riot in the U.S. Capitol. In some places around the country, there's been outright defiance of health orders that are designed to protect the greatest number of people, especially those at the highest risk. On top of all of this has been a long overdue awakening to the inequities and injustices faced by persons of color in our society, which has also resulted in demonstrations around the country, including here in Rossmore. At times this past year, it's felt like the world as we knew it was collapsing. The social order that we've been accustomed to all our lives was hemorrhaging and the health and safety of Americans was hanging in the balance. I've often reflected this past year on how to keep the Rossmore community healthy and safe literally every single day for the last 14 months. Some residents have felt that Golden Rain should do more in particular to stand up for social justice during this time. Two years ago, the Golden Rain board strengthened its vision and values to emphasize that Rossmore is an inclusive, welcoming community. Last fall, the board approved a new policy, making it clear that harassment of others in this community was unacceptable. Both of these initiatives are important, but only amount to nice words on a page without action. Many residents mistakenly assume that GRF operates like a city with the legal power and authority that the state confers on municipalities. Golden Rain is not a city and does not have any of those powers. Golden Rain is nothing more than a nonprofit corporation that provides amenities and property management services. Basically, Rossmore is a region within the city of Walnut Creek made up of 21 quote unquote neighborhoods, which are homeowners associations that have no legal affiliation with or allegiance to one another. In 2019, the Interfaith Council of Rossmore held a cultural diversity discussion where several residents described their experiences with discrimination, injustice, and harassment. Referring back to my remarks that day in light of last week's conviction of the former police officer and George Floyd's death, I'm reminded again of Golden Rain Foundation's values and desire to be an inclusive, welcoming community, and that it takes more than just words to affect real, lasting change. While we cannot change other parts of our country, we as a community can help ensure that Rossmore is welcoming, compassionate, tolerant, and understanding. Martin Luther King stated that, quote, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confines of his individualistic concerns to the broader concerns of all humanity. So what does that mean for Americans, Californians, and Rossmoreans? It clearly means we cannot just look out for our own self-interest, but for the interests of others, and I might add, especially those who are vulnerable due to disability, age, gender, and those who are outside mainstream society. There's a delicate balance we navigate every day here in Rossmore between personal space, civil rights, and freedom to go and do what, when, and where we want. The tension between individual freedom and personal safety, and that of the safety of the greater community is something that residents, staff, and Securitas deal with every single day. People are legitimately concerned about their safety, and that only gets more pronounced as we get older. In Rossmore, there's probably nothing more important. I would estimate that two thirds of the issues that residents bring to my attention have to do with personal safety, either in the home, on our streets, walking on our sidewalks, in our parking lots, wildland fire concerns, traffic safety, speeding, PG&E power shutoffs, and the list goes on. Everyone expects GRF to protect them, 
to slow people down, hold others accountable, extract concessions from PG&E, demand the city and fire district do this or that to keep them safe. And a vast majority of the couple hundred issues that come across my desk in a month, these are all about the individual's concerns and usually not about broader concern for everyone. In today's political environment, Personal safety has taken on a new and even frightful dimension as some politicians openly espouse non-welcoming and inflammatory rhetoric aimed at isolating immigrants, disabled people, non-Christians, and people of color. Some have even advocated for prematurely relaxing COVID restrictions, knowing full well that older people are at extreme risk and disproportionately die from the disease. When this language somehow becomes acceptable or normal discourse, we, as the components of a civil society, are required to examine and question whether this is what we have become and whether this is the society we want to build for the future. I submit that most Americans, and certainly most Rossmore residents, do not find this discourse normal, agreeable, or acceptable. With the proliferation of social media over the last decade, extremists on both the far left and the far right now have platforms to spew their hateful theories and propaganda and generate publicity. Their anger and prejudice gets propagated by the 24-hour news cycle, which is hungry for viewers, sponsorships, and ratings, and who seemingly post every fringe statement, action, and protest to stir the pot and create anxiety and fear, which then generates viewers, ratings, and revenue. This movement towards intolerance and closed-mindedness, which is the absence of reason and compromise even from some otherwise smart and intelligent people, points to a troubled and fractured society throughout the country. So let me take a moment to just look at why people hate. Intolerance and prejudice, disregard for the value of human life, refusal to acknowledge and accept others with different beliefs, religion, skin color, ethnicity, language, and lifestyle. They might feel threatened, slighted, betrayed, or even unloved by the party or group that they are hating. But we need to create where it didn't exist and restore in other places where it once was is tolerance and acceptance of others' race, nationality, religion, disability, gender, and beliefs. What we need is recognition that the diversity of our community and our nation is welcomed and celebrated, and the reason why America is America. Why living in a beautiful place like Rossmore is not just because of the landscaping and amenities, but because there are fabulously interesting and diverse people from all over the country and even the world who live here and make this a better place. What we need is belief in the dignity of others as equal brothers and sisters of the human race, that every life is sacred, has worth and contributes to the fabric of our greater community. Robert Kennedy once said, quote, ultimately America's answer to the intolerant man is diversity. The United States is a nation of immigrants. If we can accept that every life, regardless of the country of birth, has dignity and worth, then who are we to judge someone else strictly because they look or sound different or believe in a God who's different than mine? So what are we here in Rossmore gonna stand for? Who are we going to welcome? How are we going to demonstrate that we are a community open to different beliefs, different races and different viewpoints? How are we going to embody the basic values intrinsic to the foundation of America and shared by people across the political spectrum? Each and every one of us needs to answer those questions and take a stand for what is right. Martin Luther King taught us that love overcomes hate. In 1968, Robert Kennedy said, Quote, what we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence or lawlessness, but love and wisdom and compassion towards one another. To those who have been victimized by prejudice and hate, please don't judge all residents of Rossmore or Contra Costa County or the United States with the same broad stroke of bigotry that you've experienced. The vast majority of Americans in Ross Maureen stand with you and are pleased to call you one of our own. To those who have been victims of discrimination and bigotry, please know that you're not alone. This community offers you friendship and support. In addition, Golden Rain Foundation's counseling office is ready to assist with short-term counseling or refer referrals to outside entities that can provide longer-term assistance. For the rest of us, we have a duty to stand together to support one another, to speak out about social justice, to reject hate and reiterate our belief in the sanctity and dignity and worth of all people. It starts here and it starts now with each one of us. 
And, and this is consistent with the values that have been established for the Rossmore community by the Golden Rain Foundation Board of Directors. Just as in the United States, it's the ethnic, religious, and political diversity that we have in Rossmore and our acceptance of that diversity that contributes to the overall beauty, creativity, success, and enjoyment that we all have for the lifestyle that is Rossmore. It stands to reason then that a community and a society that is fractured and distrustful, angry and judgmental, non-welcoming and suspicious will ultimately become weak and powerless. The collective strength of a community's individuals who embrace diversity and creativity and learn from each other for the benefit of the whole will not only survive, but will prosper and thrive. So moving on, uh, you heard from the city manager about uh, the pandemic. Um, I'll just reiterate that, as you know, we're in the orange tier. We moved there a few weeks ago for, the, for Contra Costa County. But it did allow us to open up some more facilities, including the Tice Creek Pools, the Gateway Studios. And it's allowed us to expand our capacity, the fitness center, the outdoor pools, and the restaurant, among others. The public health officials that I'm in contact with regularly remind me that the pandemic is not over and that there are an increasing number of breakthrough cases, which is defined as people who are vaccinated who have, who have come down with COVID-19. It's very, very small, but it still is happening. Um, so it's just a good reminder that for everybody that the vaccines are not 100% effective. And so until they tell us otherwise, masking and social distancing are still required until um, we're, this is beyond us. In reviewing the county's latest data, we, um, Contra Costa, it looks like it's still a long way from um, uh, uh, qualifying for the yellow tier, which is the next least restrictive tier. Of the primary eligibility metrics, the county fails two of the three. And one of the measures uh, as of today is 180% over the, I'm sorry, 140% over the qualifying metric uh, as of today. When I wrote the, uh, my report the last week, it was 180% over. So it's been fluctuating kind of in that range now for the last, um, about the last three to four weeks. Uh, the average cases per day, in fact, have slowly increased following more than two months of steady declines. So it's unlikely that the county is moving into the yellow tier anytime soon. And uh, while the governor has, has made it clear that they're targeting June 15th as an opening date, we don't yet know what, exactly what that means. We, don't, we assume that there's going to still be some form of restriction. As the city manager mentioned, the, the city is planning on continuing with six feet uh, social distancing and masking and physical barriers for people that are going to be allowed into city buildings. And we're planning on doing exactly the same thing. So we will continue to monitor the county and state health orders, and we will continue to consult with public health officials on a regular basis to ensure that our protocols are consistent with the health orders and that they are appropriate for our risk demographic. We remain committed to minimizing the risk for residents and staff and will not expand our openings or modify protocols without input from county officials. I wanna talk about AB 3182. That's a, a new law that went, went into effect in January. It was signed by the governor in the fall. And what it did was it negated most restrictions imposed by homeowners associations on rentals longer than 30 days. Um, the governor indicated that this is one of the cornerstone solutions to the state's housing crisis that predated the pandemic. And he believed that freeing up vacation and investor owned housing that, were, that was previously constricted by homeowner association rules would create thousands of new housing units without the, the significant capital that be, would be required to build new housing. Homeowners associations throughout the state of California disagreed with that approach and um, uh, tried to convince the governor not to sign the legislation, but obviously failed in that effort. In February, I wrote to Senator Glazer and Assemblymember Bauer Cahan and asked that they consider sponsoring legislation to amend AB 3182 to either revoke the rental portions of the law or to provide an exception in the law for senior communities. Um, I've heard from a number of residents who are very upset about this change in the law and they feel that the quality of life in Rossmore will be detrimentally affected by, by the law. So in March, Mutual Operations Director Paul Donner and I, we attended a meeting with both the uh, staff members for, the, for both legislators' offices to discuss our, the Rossmore community's concerns. 
And neither office was particularly encouraging that their law would be changed anytime soon. It just passed. They are not going to turn around and revoke that law right at this time. They asked us to provide data showing that rentals had increased since the law became effective. And uh, unfortunately, the data actually shows the opposite has occurred since the law was passed. Rentals are down compared to the same period the year before. But I think over time, we'll, we will likely see an increase in rentals. And so I think what residents can do at this point is that um, if you're still concerned about this change in the law, that uh, you contact your two legislators. Uh, Rebecca Bauer Cahan is our assembly member and Steve Glazer is our senator. Bauer Cahan voted in support of the law. Senator Glazer voted against it. So those are our political avenues on uh, letting them know what, how you feel about that. And uh, in the meantime, the law is in effect and you may have renters as neighbors. And if you don't today, you may at some point in the future. So um, renting has not, never been against the law in Rossmore or against policy in Rossmore. Renters, renting has always been allowed. And uh, that is a way that many, many residents who end up buying here try out Rossmore first by renting. And this has gone on since the 1960s. Um, but the HOAs, the mutuals here, have had restrictions on how long people could rent for. And so that is what is being removed under this new law. So in, in the meantime, what I'd ask all of you to do is to welcome renters, get to know them if they're your neighbor, help them learn about Rossmore so that they have an opportunity to experience the best of what Rossmore has to offer, which, you know, aside from all the amenities and all the fun things to do, it is you. It's the people that live here that are, 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 are really make up the fabric of Rossmore. And with just a little bit of effort, you might find that not all renters are bad and you just might make some new friends. So in the meantime, uh, the law is gonna be unchanged and uh, but let your elected representatives know if you're interested in, in them changing that law. My final item here is in employee transitions. In March, we had one employee begin, commence, uh, begin employment with the Golden Rain Foundation, our new chief financial officer, Joel Lesser. And we had two employees leave employment with Golden Rain in March. Catherine Dunlap retired as our longtime payroll and benefits administrator. And Rita Tassi, who has our, uh, worked in our accounting department as an accounts payable and accounts receivable specialist. And that is my report.